Hey and welcome. So, what I thought I'd do is just make um, a video where I can answer your questions. So, periodically I get questions sent to me via Instagram, YouTube, um, sometimes people email me. And I try as hard as I can to reply to all the questions, but I can't reply to everybody. There's just not enough time in the day to, to do everything I need to do, get home, reply to all the, the clients. Um, organize the rest of the day so what I thought I'd do is put them together into a video. So I guess the biggest question I've been asked is do I use a steel mower? Why did I get it? And why haven't I bought the new Hater 56 Pro? So a few years ago when steel were bringing out the or Viking as it was, were bringing out their new roller mower. They asked me to test it, give my thoughts, and in return they said that I could have the mower on a long-term um, loan when they, they when they started producing it, but at the time of me using it or testing it, it was all very top secret, so they couldn't give me one because they didn't want other people seeing it. So. So that was that, and a long time went past. Um, last summer, I bought a 56 Pro, because I needed one. And I didn't really use it that much, because of the drought. And then, of course, then I used it a bit in the autumn, and then I used it a little bit in the spring. And then, <laughs> in the way all hater rollers go on the 56 Pro, or the old one anyway, uh, the roller went, and it went exactly at the same time the new one was coming out. So I basically had this mower that was probably not even done six months work under warranty. So I could repair it for free or drop a grand or whatever it is on a new one. And a lot of people were saying, well, you need to buy the new one because you've made videos promoting it and stuff like that. And it's like, well, I don't get given it for free. I don't even get a discount on that new mower. So. I've got a kid on the way, I've got other things, financial things that I need to uh, put my money into, so while I've got a mower that's under warranty, I'm just going to get it serviced and fixed under warranty. That makes perfect sense to me. So that's why I haven't bought a new one yet. So, But at that time, um, I spoke to Steel, and they were said, oh yeah, that mower that we were going to give you for, you know, on a long term, a long term um, hire, whatever you want to call it. Um, they said, did you want it? And I said, well, funnily enough, my hater's just broken down. And when you send a mower into um, a dealer, particularly during the summer, you're probably not going to see it again for a good few weeks. So I thought, perfect. So they've, they've given it to me, and it has, I tell you what, saved me massively. So I've been able to carry on striping everybody's lawns um, without, without too much of a problem. But what it's also done is give me a great chance to use the mower and test it. So I've been making a review video on the steel mower. And I really like it. It's really good. I've got to say, it's the best mower, or the best bagging mower I've ever used, hands down. So that's the reason why I haven't bought a hater yet, a new hater. And that's the reason why I've got the steel mower. So it was just, I think, fate really, because it was a couple of years ago that they said I could have one. And pretty much the same week that my mower died, they gave me one. Anyways. Now I'm going to answer some more questions that I've been asked. <clears throat> okay, so these are from Instagram, so I've written them down. I'm not going to say people's names. Um, so, cutting height. I've laid some new turf, and I'm cutting it at 3 to 6 inches. Is that correct? Uh, what I'd always say is of cutting heights is never get bogged down on heights of cut. You know, you need to cut it at this height or that cut. Just remember the, the rule of thirds, you know, only ever cut a third off. If it's new turf and it's growing, you know, so much higher than what the mower can actually deal with, you need to monitor that and make sure that you keep it down at a level where the mower that you have can actually deal with it. Other questions I haven't had, but I do get a lot from clients, is when do I cut after turfing? I always say just go around periodically and just try and lift the turf up. And what you'll notice is when you lift it up, there'll be lots of little white roots. Okay, so when you go around, don't always pick up the same bit. 
but go around picking it up and eventually you'll be tugging, tugging at it and it won't move. So that's a good indication that you can gently take a mower over on a high cut and you're not going to dis disturb the, the newly laid turf. Question I had recently, when's the best time to top dress? Well, really in your maintenance seasons, which is springtime or autumn. You know, the, the whole point of lawn care is to make the, the lawn look nice, particularly during the summer. So chucking a load of soil over it and basically stopping the kids being able to play on the lawn and people to walk around on it just doesn't make sense. Um, but always have a question in your mind as to why you're doing it. Why are you top dressing? What's the reason for it? Um, normally you'd be top dressing because you've aerated, scarified, just overseeded. Just keep that in mind when you're asking the question of when do I do this, when do, when do I do that, what's the final result that you want, what's the reason why you're doing it and that hopefully should help you come to the conclusion as to when to do something. Someone sent me a picture saying what is this and the answer is red thread. Uh, you can see by the pink bits around that it's, it's active. Um, once it's been active, you'll just be end up with that kind of strawy, kind of sort of burntish looking patch. Um, but while the pink stuff there, that's that means it's active. If you can monitor your lawn on a regular basis, and and as soon as you see the hint of that kind of pink, kind of candy floss stuff, that's the time to act. And generally, what I would say is just it just needs a good feed, basically. I have noticed that actually iron works brilliantly, but I would be really hesitant to use iron or just iron um, during the summer because you know if we have a, a heat wave then there's a good chance it's going to scorch the lawn. So either use a, a feed which has a little hint of iron or still work, stay well clear during the summer months. Okay, one question I get all the time is what is that blue dye I use in my winter iron video? And it's called Trailblazer Trio and it's from Rigby Taylor. Basically any product you see me use, there's 99% chance that I've got it from Rigby Taylor. Uh, one, because they sell good stuff, um, they're a good company and actually they're local to me so I can just go and pick some stuff up without having to get it all delivered. Someone said they're still headphones, they can't get them to connect to their phone. What is the problem? Um, so I've got a confession to make about the, the still headphones. When I first got given them, I literally just got given the first pair and they came with no instructions and I also really struggled to connect it. Um, and I wasn't aware that actually the, there was a Bluetooth mechanism or there was a microphone in it so you could actually use it as a hands-free. And in the video I said this is brilliant, but if it had that, that part it would be really cool. Um, Michael Gold, uh, Goulding, I think it is, from um, Instagram, amazing account, um, go follow. He, um, he private messaged me and just basically sent me the instructions, which was really useful because I was doing it all blind. But to answer your question, on your middle button, you've got three buttons, on the middle one just hold it down for about six seconds and normally that's enough to connect it up to your phone or whatever. Okay, so another picture, what are all these patches? Um, I would say it's a classic sign that a dog's been peeing on the lawn and it's now in that kind of recovery state. You always find when you get a, a pee patch, you get the burnt grass and then you get a nice lush green ring of grass around it. Well, eventually that grass sort of grows long and then kind of covers up the burn patch, but I reckon if you chop it down, you'll see the burn patch in the middle. I've got weeds in my lawn. I've used a weed and feed, but nothing's happened. Oh. Well, I'm not familiar with weed and feeds. Um, I tend to use a selective weed killer um, and separate fertilizers. Uh, what I would say is just check your application rate that you're using it properly. You're putting enough down. Um, and you're watering it in if it needs to be watered in or you're keeping the lawn dry if that's what needs to happen. Um, also what I would say, and something that I've experienced in the past, is that the selective weed killers are, there'll be a list of what weeds that they actually treat and they're normally sort of lawn weeds if you like, so your dandelions and things like that, but sometimes you can get stuff which spread from the flower bed into the lawn, so they're not designed to, to kill that particular thing. Uh, so have a look at your weeds and 
try and work out what they are which is in your lawn and then have a look at the weed killer you're using and see if actually it does treat them because there's a chance it may not. What website do I use? Um, GoDaddy, simply. Really good, really happy with it. Uh, me and my friend, we do it together. Um, and yeah, they've been spot on since day one. How long shall I keep my pet off the lawn after spraying iron? Well, a kind of a stock response would be to say just leave it until it's dried. Um, some days it's going to dry quicker than the others. I don't think the iron's really the problem there. I think if you're using the blue dye that I mentioned earlier, I would say that's more your problem. Uh, particularly if you've got like a white uh, retriever or something. If it's going to go roll on the lawn, it's going to end up looking like a smurf. Also, if you've got little kids that run around on the lawn, then run through and then put white little, sorry, blue little footprints all over your carpet, uh, the client's probably not going to be best pleased. So I always just make them aware of that fact that it's probably the dye that's probably going to cause more damage than the iron. Also be aware of the iron, spraying it on the patio, that it's going to give it, make it go really rusty colour. So that's another reason not to walk it around and onto the path and things like that. Quite often once I've sprayed, what I'll do is I'll have another pair of shoes waiting by the side of the lawn so I can take my boots off, which are covered in dye and iron, put, say, my trainers on so I can walk across the patio and not leave those footprints. So now what I'm going to do is answer some questions from YouTube. Uh, so I'm going to read these ones off my phone. Um, Frank Komar, I hope I pronounced that right. Um, he's just got the new um, Still Strim Ahead, and he said it's uh, it's pretty stiff to to use um, to to wind it through and what have you. Should he use a lubricant to free it up? I'd say it just frees up naturally, just needs to wear a little bit, um, so there's no problem there. Uh, Mark Eggleton, Dave is a rough guide, uh, would you price um, aeration around three times the cost of mowing? As a ballpark figure, I think that's probably accurate. I think in the video that you've commented on, in that video it took me an hour to, to do the, the aeration and then you know, I think the job was three hours total to clear it up. So that's about right, I'd say. Just be aware that obviously there's going to be a price difference or time difference between hollow coring and solid tining. Um, also be aware the costs of hiring a machine. It's a £20 mow, say, and so that would suggest that it's a £60 for aeration. But if you're then adding on, you know, the higher costs as well, all of a sudden someone who has their lawn mowed for 20 quid and you've suggested aeration and then you're coming in at 150 quid for what appears to be you know 10 minutes work it's not going to be financially very appealing to the client so what you might want to do is wait until you've got a lot of little lawns group them all together and then um, then you can spread that higher cost around um, and there just might be more chance of, of landing that service. Uh, but if you own the machine, great, you can charge what you want. Um, this is from Mark again. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, this is referring to the Camon aerator again. Uh, do I know if there is a knife slitter tool attachment available for this machine? Um, Mark, I spoke to them uh, two days ago and I asked them the question and currently there isn't. So at the minute all you've got is the hollow core tines, the standard small tines that originally came with it, and then the the bigger tines which I uh, forced them to make. <laughs> um, but there is no uh, no slitter tines or or any plans to make them either at the moment. Um, on the on the scarifier, you can actually take the reel off, and there's a load of different types of attachments that you can put on there. Maybe. I think that's my watch. Maybe there is a some kind of slitter on that, perhaps, um, but I'm not sure. Certainly with the aerator, there's nothing. <laughs> Do I listen to the music that I use in my videos when I'm doing the jobs? Uh, no, I generally listen to podcasts, I would say. Um, music's always difficult because 
you have to use music which you have you are allowed to use. So, uh, no copyright sound is a great uh, site to go to to get free music. But the problem is, is that it's it's normally pretty dancey. So, that's uh, that's why they are all uh, quite up tempo, shall we say? Do I have all three new haters yet? No, I don't. I have the I have the 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 new forty one, but that's pretty old now. Um, I when I first started, I started with the forty eight the old one, um, and then I, I pretty quickly outgrew that and went to the 56, um, which was great, but the 56, there was two jobs, at, or I have three jobs now, but at the time I had two jobs that it was just too big for, so I got the 41. So I have the 41 and the 56, but I don't have the 48, and I probably, I loved it, it was a great mower, but uh, I don't really have any need for it. I have a few burn patches on my grass from iron, or, from iron of sulfate, from iron sulfate. I didn't water after. How do I correct the burns? Um, so this was sent on the 14th of July. Um, I'm a little confused why you'd be putting iron sulfate down in July. Um, in the video I made, it's very, a very sort of entitled it winter iron treatment. Um, Again, going back to one of the questions where I said, try and think about why you're doing the job. What's what do you? What's the result you want from it? Also remembering that ideally the summer months are the months you want the lawn to look at its best. Um, you'd be putting iron sulfate down to kill the moss. Um, I'm not sure why you'd want to do that in the summer. Um, it's definitely a winter thing. However, iron does colour the lawn nicely, so in conjunction with a feed, a little sort of four percent um, iron will will give it a nice colour. But you know, again, it needs to be watered in. I, I think ultimately, there's a little saying that's always quite good when you do overfeed or you spill something is that the solution to the pollution is dilution. So um, yeah, although you haven't watered, you need to get on the watering and keep watering and keep watering, and uh, just try and dilute dilute it as quickly as you can. I uh, appreciate this was a while ago now, so um, I don't know what situation your lawn's in now, but um, what you might find is you have some big burn patches which just don't recover, so you might need to just aerate and overseed, um, <clears throat> but make sure you water it in. So I've got some other videos coming up soon, although I haven't been on YouTube or, or Instagram for a while, in fact for the last month or two I just took a complete break from all social media just put the odd photo up there and then but I haven't watched any videos of anybody so I'm sorry um, but I'm really getting back into it now as a lot of you know I've just had the, the birth of my first child so that's really sort of taken up a lot of my time also leading up to it from sort of springtime the last video I put up was the <clears throat> the turfing video well that was filmed in March time and I filmed it and everything was good and then I was I was ready to publish it then, but for whatever reason, just didn't get round to it. Really spent the springtime just working as hard as I can, just to create you know uh, a good pot of money for for my family as it is now, and um, that really takes priority, as I'm sure you you know it is the case with everybody. You know, for me, YouTube's it's just a, a hobby. Um, I enjoy it, but uh, you know, if I haven't got time, then it has to take a back seat. Anyways, I hope uh, you found these questions and answer session helpful, useful, um, and I guess thank you for sending them to me. Um, I'm sorry it takes so long to get back, but as all you solo guys out there know, you know, it's, uh, it's all pretty busy. Anyways, I'll, um, I'll see you soon.